I was living in Ohio and it was winter time. One day I took my son to daycare center and the daycare workers started getting agitated and they said, somebody call the emergency. And I would look at them and say, what's the matter? And they said, don't you know? I said, no. And they said, you're all blue. I went that same day to my family doctor and and he, he didn't know what it was. He sent me to a specialist at the University of Cincinnati who did more tests, and they came back with a diagnosis of cold gluten and disease. Before that moment, I had never heard the term or knew what it was or knew anything about it. And they uh, told me, well, you basically have two choices. You, you can either take steroids or, or move to a warm, dry place. So I went home and told my uh, spouse at the time what, what he said. And she said, okay, well, I guess we have to move. When I moved to Arizona, I continued to work. And I found from experience, though, that no matter where I went, there was times when the environment would be cold and it would trigger my condition. My feet would get very sore and very numb. And I wore wool socks, but that wasn't enough. And I found myself having difficulties being able to walk. So eventually I got to the point where I felt that I realistically couldn't work. And at that point I went on disability. I was a very active person before I got cat. I was just living a normal life. I had, you know, two kids. We lived in a home, lawns to mow, a job to go to. Uh, we went on vacations, things that everyone pretty much does and you don't think about it. It was frustrating when now I had these new limits, especially when you want to provide for your family. And suddenly now you've got these restrictions. And then the other problem with CAD is you didn't always know when you would be triggered. If I started to wash my hands when the water was really cold, or if I'm cooking, which I love to do, I have to be careful there because when you're cooking, you tend to wash your hands and, and put your hands in the refrigerator or the freezer to get things. So if, if you do too much of that, then your fingers start to turn blue. So it, it does change your life in just about every way. One of the doctors early on said that you have to be your own advocate because the people around you know so little about it. The laboratories, oftentimes, they don't know how to treat my blood. They, they want to treat it like everybody else's, and you can't. It's a learning experience that I typically have to initiate and help them understand, and it doesn't end. I'm not a person that talks about my emotions very much. I, I internalize them and I just try to deal with it in a way that I'm not taking it out on other people. Even though this condition is rare and even though it has limits, I have for the most part been able to live a pretty normal life. Instead of giving up things totally, you just learn to do things differently in a different way. One of the things that I'm proud of is I got involved with being an advocate for members of homeowners associations. And that's been very important because it's kept me busy and it's given me some goals and it's given me an opportunity to, to help people. I enjoy walking with the dogs. I love architecture. I still draw. I used to do that for a living, but now I do it more for pleasure. It gives me a chance to use my imagination. Having this disease actually is not all bad because it's taught me to appreciate life. It's made me realize that there's other people that have different problems than, than I have. And it's helped me to be more empathetic towards them. And I think that's made me a better person.